Hey guys, thanks for watching Beyond Science. It's Mike Chen. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the most interesting Beyond Sciencey news items from last week. So let's get started with this one. A new finding has been made that could possibly make a huge breakthrough in what we know about Christianity. A biblical researcher named Ralph Ellis claims to have found the first and only real image of Jesus Christ on a small bronze coin dating from the first century. So yeah, Jesus may not actually look like this or this or even this. The thing is, the face on the coin is actually thought to belong to King Manu of Mesopotamia. But Ellis says that Manu and Jesus Christ are actually the same person. Ellis has been researching revisionary religious history and spent years studying the Bible, Christianity, and its related people. He says that there are striking similarities between Jesus Christ and King Manu. First off, both Jesus and King Manu were Nazarene Jews who lived in Jerusalem in the first century. Secondly, both were a threat to the Romans. And even though people aren't really clear as as to how King Manu really died, Ellis believes that he, like Jesus, was also crucified by the Romans. And when you look at the coins, you can see that it depicts the tiara of the Edison monarchs, which is a plated crown of thorns. Ellis says that Jesus was the only convict said to have been forced to wear a crown of thorns as he was led to his execution. And even though Jesus Christ is usually depicted as a long-haired man with a beard, he isn't depicted like that in the Bible, so no one really knows what he actually looks like. Jesus was also forced to wear a a purple cloak which symbolizes power and was once worn by Roman emperors. Because of this, Illus explains that it is my theory that Jesus was forced to wear this crown in the biblical story because he, or more correctly, King Isis Manu, had attempted to overthrow the Romans. Both the crown and cloak were overly political statements warning against further uprisings against Rome. So yeah, this could be the first accurate image of Jesus Christ. But let me ask you guys, does it really matter what he looks like? Isn't faith alone enough? But Illus says that as a historian, this is deeply troubling. He wants to reconnect what is known from the Bible with no history to provide proof that Jesus actually existed. Next up, if you were ever a fan of Lou Gehrig, well then, he might be back. Reincarnation is of course a belief that a soul can be reborn into a new body. Although many scientists say it's a myth, many people, including me, believe it all around the world. In a recent case of possible reincarnation involves an eight-year-old boy named Christian Hobbes whose mother Kathy Bird believes he is the reincarnation of baseball legend New York Yankee Lou Gehrig. Now the reason why she thinks her son is the reincarnation of Lou Gehrig is because starting at the age of two, he would tell her that he used to be a tall baseball player who died because his body stopped working. Bird was first really surprised by everything her son was telling her, but then she became convinced that he is indeed the reincarnation of Lou Gehrig. Now if you don't know, Gehrig was a baseball player in the 1920s and 30s. Sadly, he was diagnosed diagnosed with ALS, which is a progressive neurological disease that affects nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. There is no one test or procedure to ultimately establish the diagnosis of ALS, and victims of the disease will survive for about three to five years, although there have been cases of people surviving up to 10 years. As a result of being diagnosed with ALS in 1939, Gehrig died two years later in 1941. And because young Christian said that he was once a tall baseball player who died because of a non-working body, Kathy was convinced that he was indeed Lou Gehrig. She was so adamant about her belief that she even wrote a book called The Boy Who Knows Too Much, which is hitting bookshelves this week. The book contains stories that happened around the time when Christian was two years old, which is before he was introduced to baseball. Christian said that in his past life, he would travel to hotels by trains, which is exactly what Lou Gehrig did. Another interesting thing is that when Christian saw a photo of Gehrig and Babe Ruth together, he said that the two didn't speak to each other. Apparently, that was true as well, as the babe and Lou had a following out before Gehrig was diagnosed with ALS. And when Kathy asked her son how he knew about such a thing, he replied, I just know. Not only that, Christian claimed that his mother, Kathy Tucker, was the reincarnation of Lou Gehrig's mother as well. Christian told renowned reincarnation researcher Jim Tucker of the University of Virginia that he chose Kathy to be his mother. His original quote was, I picked her to be my mom, and then she got old. He pointed to a photo of Gehrig's mother and told his mom, Mommy, you were her. Kathy was skeptical but decided to see if his statement was really true. As a result, she went under hypnosis and actually recalled a past life as Gehrig's mother. Now, what's also really interesting about this story is that you will be able to see this story on the big screen because 20th Century Fox has already jumped at the opportunity of creating a film adaptation of Kathy's new book. Now, as I mentioned before, I do believe in reincarnation and could this little boy be the reincarnation of Lou Gehrig? Absolutely. 
holy. I mean, after Garrick died, he had to reincarnate to somebody, so why couldn't it be a little Christian here? What could make this story even potentially more fascinating would be if Christian grows up to play for the Yankees as a first baseman. And finally, our last story, if you are paranoid about zombies and a zombie apocalypse, you are not alone. Ancient skeletons have been found that provide evidence of medieval people chopping up corpses in order to stop them from returning as zombies. A team from Historic England in the University of Southampton found 137 bones that date from the 11th to the 14th century AD, representing 10 butchered skeletal remains. These remains were found in a pit near the abandoned village of Warham Percy in North Yorkshire and show evidence that the corpses had their bones cut and scorched in various parts of the body. Analysis of the teeth of these skeletons by measuring radioisotopes showed that the corpses were locals of the village. Alistair Pike, professor of archaeological science at the University of Southampton, who directed the isotopic analysis, explained, Strontium isotopes in the teeth reflect the geology on which an individual was living as their teeth formed in childhood. A match between the isotopes in the teeth and the geology around Warren Percy suggests that they grew up in an area close to where they were buried, possibly in the village. Although there were stories of people coming back from the dead, as well as accounts of corpses being beheaded and set on fire because many people were afraid they might be restless in their graves, no one actually found such chopped up remains on town now. What's strange is that the skeletons found included women and children alike, even though stories about corpses coming back to life really only involved males. Also, even though these burnings and beheadings were dated to hundreds of years ago, Simon Mays, a skeletal biologist of historical England, said the idea that Warren Percy bones are the remains of corpses burnt and dismembered to stop them walking from their graves seems to fit the evidence best. It shows us a dark side of medieval beliefs and provides a graphic reminder of how different the medieval view of the world was from our own. Now, zombies may not be the only things these people were afraid of. Vampire burials were also found in Eastern Europe, which involved staked skeletons with sickles around their necks so they can't turn into vampires. Now, there is another possible explanation for these chopped up bones, and I feel like it's more terrifying than vampires and zombies. This explanation was that cannibalism was present during the time due to famine, so people had their brains eaten and marrow sucked from their thigh bones. But this is not very plausible because the corpses had knife marks around the head and neck, which differ from the areas that are cut in cannibalism. Although the recently discovered corpses show a possibility that the undead actually may exist, Dr. Mays is skeptical because he doesn't believe in anything related to the supernatural. He believes that the reason why medieval people chopped up corpses was because they were different in their outlook and struggle to come in terms with many things we take for granted. So in today's video, we covered a potential Jesus selfie, Lou Gehrig may be back, and our ancestors were the ones who stopped the zombie apocalypse. Let me ask you guys, do you believe that is the real image of Jesus? And if it is, does it look like what you thought Jesus would look like? Also, let me know, are you going to see that reincarnation movie when it comes out? And uh, do you think that the our ancestors, when they buried the dead and tried to prevent them from coming back as zombies or vampires, do you think it's because they are just super paranoid and too superstitious or they actually really did us a huge favor? Thank you all so much for watching this video. See you later.